Hey, what's going on YouTube? I'm going to do my uh, second part in a three-part series of my my painting videos, my how-to painting videos. Um, <clears throat> thanks for tuning in. Please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm going to also post links in the description for the paints and uh, some of the things that I use to do this. So, uh, Wicked Colors, Createx, Parma Fast Color, Proline, things like that, uh, <clears throat> Iwata, uh, Pash, uh, J Concepts and Proline Bodies, stuff like that. I'll put some links down there. If you guys can use those links, it'll help out the channel. I'm trying to grow the channel a little bit and I do some more how-to videos. I got a lot of auto-related videos, so I'm going to add some painting videos since I've been painting for almost 40 years and this will... This is video number two. Check out video number one if you haven't seen that yet, where I go over how I start as far as cutting out the design and laying out the design and things like that. But uh, let's get started. Get some black. Let me get get a little air pressure going. I'm using about 25 to 28 psi to start out. <clears throat> And someone's messed with my air pressure. It's more like it. Alright. I don't reduce most paints. If I'm doing a lot of detail work, um, <clears throat> then I'll, I'll do a little reduction. Because you're going to get closer and you want to do things much finer. But most RC stuff doesn't really require... Uh, a fine tip and and very close spraying so you can use a little more pressure and unreduced <clears throat> I'm gonna paint the wings too on these so see if we can get this <clears throat> cleared out One of the mistakes a lot of painters do is <clears throat> just the, the airbrush can let out air or air and material. So when you're done spraying your material, you always want to stop the material and keep the air going before you let off the air. A lot of inexperienced painters <clears throat> will be spraying paint and they'll just let up and that's when it'll splatter on the surface. So that's what you want to avoid by stopping the material flow while you're keeping air pressure flowing. It doesn't matter if you're doing, you know, uh, backing a color with white or silver or something like that. What, it doesn't matter what technique you use because it's already painted and you're just backing it. But if you're doing any kind of detail work, you want to pay attention to that. Try to train yourself to always stop the material first. Everyone cuts these wings a little differently. So I try to be a little generous with the shading so that when they cut it, they won't be cutting off all the shading. So some wings will have uh, <clears throat> multiple cut lines in the back. I'll try to shade all of those cut lines just in case they trim the wing a little a little different than I would and use different cut lines so you want to cover all the bases of course if you're doing it for yourself you know exactly where you're going to cut it so it's not an issue that's the uh, first wing Try to do about three passes real light. Nothing too heavy.
Now you can see on here I've, I have some stripes masked out. So I want to try to shade those stripes as well so that when I, when I paint the blue, I'll be peeling this off and it'll give a nice contrast, give some, some detail. Won't just be a big blue wing. These paint jobs have a, a lot of checkers and a lot of shading as well as the stripes on the roof. All pre-cut. So all I need to do is blow in some black. Nice and gently. I'll try to give the uh, I try to give the checkers a little bit of depth. So I'll, I'll go in a circle when I spray them. I'll spray on the outside. Try to leave the center open a little bit so some of the blue will come through on the final product. And if you just fill them full of black, you know, that works too, but it won't, it won't give you the depth. One of the things a lot of people will ask me is, where does the depth come from? That's one of the little things that you do that some people won't even know why. They'll just know that it looks a little better. Even the little checkers. Try to run around a circle around the outside and leave a little room for some color in the center. Don't laugh if I hold my tongue funny while I'm doing this. Sometimes I do it. Whatever it takes to get the details where I want them. Funny faces. Any means necessary. They get the job done right. I just like to say nothing but the best. I'm not sure how long it'll take to shave these two BJ4 bodies. I'm thinking I'm able to do the black portion on both of them in under 10 minutes, and that's probably about how long this video will be. And then, uh, airbrush is getting dirty. Every once in a while, you need to clean the tip. I have the cap off of this so I can pull the tip back just to clean any dried paint from the surface area which is what messes up your, uh, your work a lot of times that tip of the dried paint on it try to hit all your little corners and, and, uh, and edges to try to give the abstract flame some depth I try to get under those edges pretty good. Even the, all these little flame licks. All the little flame licks need to get a little bit of black under them. Just to give it some depth. I'm going to come up the back here as well, finish it. Rather than trying to go around the, the corner, <clears throat> just do the two flat areas separately. Because this is only for a depth effect, it's not um, It's not a major detail, that's going to barely show up with the blue. By the time I'm spring blue in there, it's just barely going to be noticeable because the blue's, the pearl blue is fairly dark. So if you get in this corner and you get a little extra black, you don't have to panic about that. Okay. 
I try to shade all the uh, the scoops and vents and things like that. Try to give them a little shading for depth. Go around all the windows. A little bit on the corners too. You can you can hit the radius corners a little bit. You almost can't see that we've laid some black in there. It's just barely visible. You can't really, uh, you don't, if you see black, then it's completely black. It's not a shadow. If you barely can see that there's some black holding up to white or to the light, you can barely see, like it almost looks gray and, and it looks like window tint. That's, that's what a proper shadow should look like. So it doesn't overpower the other colors. You're just trying to add some depth. These, the stripes will give me good shadows by spraying the material directly on the stripe and just letting the overspray run down the sides. That's how I try to do that so that it don't, I don't get black blotches and stuff. I do go a little heavy around the windows because they're going to be a, either a bright yellow or a silver most of the time. So to really make them stand out, you can go pretty dark around those. I started doing the black in the main color area just for realism because race cars uh, usually during a race they're quite dirty and they show some depth um, you know they're not squeaky clean so I wanted my RC cars to show some depth as well so I started doing the black I think basically uh, almost every painter does it does it you know, to some degree. Peel out the uh, checkers on this one yet, so let's do that. I'm gonna peel out every other checker. It's best uh, if you want to make it simpler when you're pulling out your checkers. Don't just go random because then you'll pull out the wrong one, almost guaranteed. You have to just keep staggering them. That way you're you're not missing them and you're not pulling out the wrong ones. It's tempting to just jump ahead to a part that's easier to pull, but um, trust me, it ends in disaster. You want to definitely go one at a time and be patient with it. Sometimes if you, if, if you pull up nice and easily, you'll see that um, you might not have cut quite enough and it starts to lift another one. Don't panic. As long as you're lifting it nice and easily, you can press it back down and Grab your X-Acto blade and just touch up that little area. It happens a lot. So that's why I always peel a little bit gently and watch what's happening with the material around what I cut. If you get in a rush, it's not going to come out nearly as good. I always have to be patient. Once I get these checkers done, I think we'll uh, get the blue out. If these weren't box art bodies, then I would probably paint some pearl or put some metal flake down like everyone's doing nowadays. But these bodies are um, for someone who's doing box art BJ4 cars. And they wanted to have them represent the box art pretty closely and that they didn't have to be exact but they did want them close and since I'm the original artist they came to me wanting them and made that 
made that request that I get it pretty close, but it didn't have to be exact. That's how I prefer it, because like I said in my other video, I like to be a little artistic and have a little artistic freedom. I don't like the cookie cutter paint jobs that you can't tell whether it was silk screened or, or hand painted. So, again, circling the checkers to leave a little space in the center for the color to show through. It's not a precise thing. But it does definitely give a nice effect when you're done. a little bit because I did it on the other side. That's one of the things that can throw off a new painter too. If you do a shadow on a radius on this side, you got to remember to do it on that side. Otherwise, when you're done, it's going to it's gonna show that you didn't match it from left to right as far as that goes. Not everyone would notice it, but I would, and I probably wouldn't be able to go without saying something to you. <laughs> I think we're pretty good on this. Put a little more up here. All right. I think we're pretty good. <clears throat> this body I'm just doing for eBay. Associated electric A scale body from J Concepts. I'm going to, uh, when I get a request for paint jobs uh, from a client, I try to always paint an extra body for myself or for, for selling on eBay or someplace like that, especially if I only have a couple bodies to paint. And lately I've been painting, you know, two to six bodies a month, basically. Nothing like I used to. It, that was a little bit stressful and people were getting angry if, I, if they weren't done within a few weeks or it had to gotten to where sometimes it took a couple of months because I was I literally would have a hundred bodies waiting to be painted <clears throat> and uh, since I never made nearly the amount of money I did being a mechanic at work it was hard to uh, st struggle at work and Try to do paint jobs that you make about twelve dollars an hour for. So, so I'm back to where it's fun again, and I can just enjoy myself and paint up a couple bodies here and there, not be stressed out about it. And Oh, that's something too that you, once you paint enough bodies, you learn to flip them around and work on them pretty regular without uh, without even really giving it a second thought. But just realized I did that. <laughs> that's the best way to get from left to right. Flip it around. All right, so the black's done. Um, I'm gonna go to blue. I try not to put paint back in my in my paint jars unless I've got a lot of paint in here. If I overfilled it and you know hardly made a dent in it, I will pour it back in there. Some people say don't do that, but I haven't had a problem doing that. Right now I only have a couple drops of paint, so you won't even get it back in the jar. It's, it's all just going to stick to the side. And <clears throat> so then I just spray it out. I have a mixture of uh, water, alcohol, uh, Windex. A little bit of glycerin for lubrication which doesn't affect the uh, paint adhesion uh, this is the glycerin I use health and beauty C 
see if that will focus so you guys can see it. There you go. Glycerin. So that stuff is, is good. It's lubricate your airbrush <clears throat> and uh, help stop corrosion and stuff in your airbrush. But it doesn't hurt the paint. You only want to use a couple of drops. I'll fill this basically two thirds of the way with water, a third of the way with alcohol. Put you know a couple of squirts of Windex and a, a couple of drops of glycerin in the in the mixture. Or you can spend twelve dollars for you know this is a two ounce bottle the, the eight ounce bottle of airbrush cleaner is about twelve dollars and I can make about four gallons of of this product <clears throat> and it works for reduction but not as well if I'm doing detail work then I'll use the actual reducer which <clears throat> the high performance reducer it's a little expensive but you know on a on a really hardcore project that's important then you always want to step up and, and use the good stuff. But for most RC stuff that we're doing, this is fine. I haven't had any problems with adhesion or any of that, and it cleans my airbrushes great. Sometimes I use some Restorer. If I know I'm not going to use the airbrush for a while, I'll run, I'll run a Createx Airbrush Restorer through it just to make sure it gets all the gook out of there. The stuff is very toxic, though. You have to wear a mask if you use that stuff. It's, it's hardcore. You'll find it hard to breathe if you're taking some of that in. <clears throat> I just use a paintbrush. I have an old flathead paintbrush to clean the airbrush out. I just cycle it around here, try to break up the material, suspend it in the liquid. <clears throat> Do that a few times. Back flush will help push material that can't make it out that way. It will push the material back into the paint cup. You'll be able to you'll be able to finalize your cleanup job in between colors. Every time you change colors, you, you want to do this. Run paints through it. I mean, run uh, water or uh, airbrush cleaner or something through there to get all the old material out. <clears throat> now, if you just painted yellow and you're going to back it with white, you don't have to spray all the yellow out. Because you're going over the yellow with white, you can just add white to it, and that works fine. I haven't any trouble doing that. But if you're changing colors from black to blue, you're not going to want black to splatter out in, you know, randomly in your blue paint. So just be aware of that. Uh, let's see. We're going to use Pearlized Createx, number 5304. I think I bought this at Hobby Lobby for $4.99. That's the uh, part number 498089 at Hobby Lobby. But the Createx number is 5304. It's a real nice pearl blue. This is what, um, this is basically the same color I used on all of Jason's bodies when I used to paint them. And uh, it's a real popular color. The most popular color combination is pearl blue, orange, yellow, white, and silver in some form or another where it's outlining things or the windows or something. But I probably, it's probably 60-70% of the bodies I paint are blue, orange, yellow, white. So if you're going to paint some bodies, you definitely want to have those colors. This is, this is basically every every RC car you see on the track this is basically all the colors you need <laughs> I might be exaggerating a little bit but they're nice colors and that's that's why so, let's see sometimes if the paint won't mix well you can stick an old paintbrush in there this is this is mixed pretty good, but I'm gonna just show you. If I'm not sure about how it's going, if it's mixing well enough, and if you let the pigment separate from the from the liquid, 
the carrier, then you're going to just end up with a mess. It's not going to spray consistently and uh, your results aren't going to be that good. That worked out good. You just use any old paintbrush and I just wipe the handle off afterwards. It's not a big deal. <clears throat> I will turn up the air pressure a little bit. Because now I'm going to be painting a lot of material. You always want to do pretty light coats. You don't want to get too crazy. Um, if you try to cover it in one coat, you're gonna you're gonna get the adhesion problems, and it'll take a long time to dry. Now I do have a heat gun that I use, um, aka wipes old hair dryer. But if you use that, you got to be careful. You don't want to get right up on the paint. That's about the first coat you can you can see it's pretty transparent. You're not trying to cover it 100% in the first coat. That's basically uh, when I paint a car or a motorcycle. That's called a tack coat. So. not quite dry, but you definitely don't want wet, glossy look to it. If it goes on really wet and glossy, um, then it's too heavy. So that's what it looks like. Now <clears throat> I'm hitting the checkers because like I said, I went around the outside, so now you'll be able to see a little blue through the checkers. I would normally be wearing a mask. I highly recommend wearing a mask when you do this, but I can't talk and make a video while I'm wearing a mask. It's water-based, so it's not as bad as solvent-based paint. But I always say, if it'll stick to Lexan, it can't be good for your lungs. No matter what they say, whether it's considered toxic or not. Now the second coat, I'm going to peel out all these stripes. Try to give it a tiny bit different depth as well as uh, as well as the black shading around the stripes. It'll be a slightly different depth of blue. Sometimes I'll even put a little purple on the edges if it's not for box art. Blue and purple go together well and you can use the purple to, to add some depth. Not a lot, just a little bit like you're shading. Just put it on the edges. Try to make sure you don't miss anything. First coat so light that uh, you have to be careful you're not missing. You don't want to miss anything 100%. It's not very, uh, it's not a very precise thing spraying the main color. <clears throat> You're basically just filling in the blanks, so you don't have to, um, you don't have to be meticulous like you're doing your shading or doing fine detail work. You're just blowing color and you're more worried about the sheen of the paint when you're putting on the first coat. The second coat, you're going to probably go about twice as heavy. And then I'll do a third coat where I'm just touching up any light areas. Um, I don't do three full coats. That's the tack coat, a wet coat, and then a final coat. Just okay. I'm going to put some metal flake on this uh, in the blue area on this because this is this body is just going to be for eBay, so it doesn't have to match the box art. This is a Parma product, I believe. I'm not sure if they still make this, but this is what they they come in fast glitter. 
So this is a, a, a blue. I've got gold, silver, blue, orange, sparkle. I got a whole bunch of different ones, but I'll just put this in the material. I don't want to put it in with the um, in my small airbrush. It has too small of an orifice. I think it's a 0.5 millimeter. So for this, this material is a little bit big for that, I think. So just in case, I'm going to use my, my inexpensive airbrush, which is, that's got a, like a 0.7, I believe I have in this. It doesn't take much of the metal flake. And you only need to put it in the first coat. Use an old toothpick. Stir it in. Sparkly. Alright. Let's see here. I haven't used this airbrush in a while. I am going to have to reduce this. I'm going to use 4030 Balancing Clear. I don't know if you can see that. This is good stuff. Createx makes it. <clears throat> it adds a little flow to the material. It can also help with adhesion too on colors like uh, fluorescent yellow, fluorescent green. They don't like to stick very well. So this product helps with that a bit. It's actually what they, uh, at least I believe this is what they make the paints out of. They have some of this in the paint with the pigment. This is just all of that adhesion promoter which helps flow and adhesion. Works really good. Stir it in with my toothbrush, my toothpick. Sometimes it doesn't want to spray because the material is kind of thick. I'll back the needle out. Like I said, this this stage is not much art to it. It's more about laying on material. Airbrush is a little bit dirty. I cleaned it last time I used it, but it's. I haven't used this one in quite a while. It's probably been a month since I've had this airbrush out. Possible something dried in the cup. see some uh, some gold sparkle I don't know if that'll come up on camera but there's some gold sparkle in there so it's a little little blotchy in the places here and there because the, uh, <laughs> the airbrush isn't working too good right now. I'm going to have to go through that and clean it all up. Maybe get a new one. I think that was a $17 airbrush 
that I bought five or six years ago. But uh, it did okay. The second coat, I'm going to clean it before I spray that. So let me uh, let me end this video. This part here, this will be the second video. I believe it'll be uh, three. I'll do a third video showing you when I'm finalizing the last color, uh, and then I'll be doing some backing, which uh, I just use clear Rust-Oleum or a similar product to back them for protection of the work when it's all done. So it, uh, it helps make them quite a bit more durable to use something like that. Some guys use rhino lining and stuff like that, but I've, I haven't had any luck uh, with that kind of stuff. And to me, it just adds so much weight and the body's going to deteriorate and tear and all of that anyway, no matter what you put on it. So I can't see adding all that weight tripling the weight of the body with rhino lining, but it worked for some people. So, well, thanks for watching the video. Remember to check the description for uh, links that will help the channel out. And uh, click like and subscribe. Uh, leave a comment. Tell me about uh, some of the processes you maybe do or something I, that you think I didn't do right. I mean, I've only been painting for 35, 36 years, but, you know, like my airbrush. Maybe, uh, maybe make fun of me because my airbrush backed it up on me. But I'm not going to try to hide anything from you guys. That's real life right there. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.